First off, thanks to those of you that took the time to go to Twitter and tweet your questions for this Q&A. Didn't get a lot of questions, but that's not the worst thing in the world. That maybe means I can give more in-depth answers on those questions that I actually did get. If you have questions that you would like answered for both wrestling and non-wrestling related topics, you can feel free to tweet them to the show at OTRS Central is the Twitter handle. And please feel free to use the hashtag OTRS Central so that way I know you're actually asking a Q&A question. Get it, got it, okay, dokie, good. So let's get started. Let's see how many questions there were. Like I said, there aren't a ton of them, so you know maybe the positive is we get to sit there and uh, take a little more time on them. First one, Heyman underscore Puzzle wants to know, what are your thoughts on Alex Riley's recent work in NXT? Well, it was nice for the brief glimpse and moment that we got. Um, shame, it sounds like he's going to be out of action for a while with surgery. That sucks. You know, Riley is just one of many examples of the failures of WWE in recent years to go with the young guy and see what they got out of him and then try to actually make a star out of him and try to actually, God forbid, make some money out of him. I don't understand how the WWE over the years, especially over the past five to seven, has thought this is a good business strategy. You debut a guy, you put him in an interesting angle, you put him in a big spot, then you go with him for a little bit, and then you just completely yank the rug out from under him. Like, literally, because somebody in the back is getting bored with them. Somebody doesn't get them. Somebody doesn't like them. Regardless of the reaction they're getting, regardless of how the fans are getting behind them or not getting behind them, you're, you're playing to two people, basically. You're playing to Vince, you're playing to Kevin Dunn, and that's the way it is. And if one or both of them isn't on board, then you can fucking hang it up and forget it no matter how good or good you are not, no matter how talented you are or not. Hey, you know, Alex Riley by no means is the other one. You know, Cesaro is another perfect example of a guy. Why would you sit there and do that shit with Cesaro when you have Vince talking about he's not really sure it resonates with the audience? Well, if we're going off of audience reaction, it sure seems like that every time he would engage in the Cesaro swing, he got a pretty big freaking reaction. If we're going to base this so much off of reactions, I remember a period of time in 2011 where A-Ride was getting a hell of a reaction. I remember in the late portion of 2013, early 2014, before they sabotaged him, before they cut the rug out from under him, yanked the rug out from under him, Cesaro was getting a really good damn reaction, a really good reaction. So if we're going to go reaction-based, then why the hell are these type of guys not getting utilized? Why are they not being featured? Why are they not being made into stars? You know, that's something that's always concerned me about Vince in particular, is that Vince wants guys to be stars, but he wants his guys to be his stars in his way. And usually if anybody goes outside of that, he does a way to quickly bury them or destroy them. And I've never really gotten that. In that type of business, yes, it's great to be right and it's important to be right, but sometimes it's more important to know when you're wrong, admit when you're wrong, understand why you're wrong, and then try to make yourself right. You know, I could sit there and say all the time that I want to be right about this, I want to be right about that, I want to be wrong about this, I don't want to be wrong about that. But let's say, for example, I'm running an NFL team and I take over and I don't think this guy's got it or this guy's got it. But a year later, they've proven to me that maybe they do have it. You know, is it more important for me to be right? And just get rid of these guys or trade them or release them just to try and validate my own rightness? Or is it import more important for me to recognize that, hey, I was wrong about this guy. He showed me something. I was wrong about that guy. He could be a player. Why don't I keep them and, you know, build around them? Does that make sense? That's why I don't really understand about Vince and the WWE it pertains to a Ryan and so many other guys. Um... You, let's see what we got next. Hollywood KBH. Do you see Baron Corbin as a top guy in WWE? I have to be honest. I haven't really checked out a ton of Baron Corbin on NXT. Pretty much the majority of any NXT watching that I've done lately has pertained specifically to a rise segments, and that's about it. I mean, maybe the guy has some potential, but until you see how he's unveiled on Raw or SmackDown, we have no idea. He could do really, really good things. He could be a guy that gets a little bit of a shine for a little bit, and then like so many others, he just gets thrown by the wayside. Only time will tell. Um, David Allen Root, if WWE was to cut any wrestler from their main roster right now, who do you think they would be? Um, one of the top ones in my mind would probably be Zack Ryder, although I wonder sometimes if the WWE keeps him just to fuck with him. And don't think that Vince and WWE aren't above that. That is all them all day. 
they would rather keep somebody under contract to fuck with them and prevent them from being happy than to sit there and do the right thing for all parties involved. I look at somebody like that and that screams out to me as somebody that would be prime candidate number one to get cut. In terms of other guys, I really don't know. I'd have to actually honestly look at the roster a little bit more to be able to make that better determination. Jay Gore 492 wants to know, Hogan has said he wants to wrestle at WrestleMania 32. Will it happen? And if it does, who do you think he should work with? Uh, will it happen? I'll still lean towards no. I would imagine Hogan would be involved in 32 in some capacity. It's just hard for me to envision it actually being a match at this point. Stranger things have happened, and that very well could be the case, is that he could end up you know, working a match at 32. I don't know if I want to see it. I don't know if we should see it. Um, if they did, and he did do some type of match, you've either got to do Cena one-on-one or some type of tag match. To me, those are the only potentially appealing options. And like I said, again, I don't know how particularly appealing those options really are. Let's see what else we've got here. Uh, Piznik64 wants to know, who would you draft number one overall? Uncle Rico, Bobby Boucher, or Al Bundy? A fascinating question. There are three answers, and only one of them is right. Some of y'all might like Uncle Rico. Some of y'all might be sitting there and talk about Bobby Boucher. But there is only one man that scored four touchdowns in a single game for Polkai, and that's Al Bundy. When you think of the epitome of of what the common man wants to be, it's Al Bundy. When you think more so of what the common man actually is, it's Al Bundy. Who can't relate to the miserable shoe salesman who's stuck in a marriage that he's not happy with, with kids that he could kind of give or take with, but at the same point in time, he wouldn't have it any other freaking way. I mean, Al Bundy was so many different levels of fucking awesome. Fucking awesome. One of the truly great sitcom characters of all time. And my personal favorite of all time. And therefore, as a result, it has to be Al Bundy is the one that you take number one overall. He scored four touchdowns in a single game for Polkai. I don't care how many tackles Bobby Boucher had. I don't care about anything related to Uncle Rico. Give me fucking Al Bundy any day of the damn week. Period. All right, and then we got one more question. It looks like here, yeah, there really weren't that many questions at all. Well, like I said, that's okay. Make sure you tweet out your questions for the next Q&A coming later this week. Uh, Joe Pugs wants to know, what do you think about the news uh, that WWE reached a record first quarter revenue? Um, I guess I'm not that surprised to see that number. Part of that, I think, has to do with you know, inflation. That always helps. You can raise prices. That always helps. The fact that WrestleMania was in the end of March, not the beginning of April, which makes a dramatic difference in overall revenues because you can group WrestleMania 31 into the quarter one financials, not the quarter two financials. Um, so, you know, in some ways it's good. In terms of the WWE Network, as you read like on the Bleacher Report article, they're talking about the fact that on its own, the network still isn't a profitable entity. That is a bit concerning, although the margin of loss is not that great. Um, you know, in some ways, things look good for WWE from a business standpoint. A lot of this has to do with the large increase in television revenue, so it could be it could be considered a bit misconstrued or a bit of a play on numbers because, yeah, they have a new television deal that kicks into effect in 2015 that pays them much more than what they were getting in 2014. No shit, they're going to have record revenues in the first quarter. They might have you know, a record second quarter, a record third quarter due to those television revenues. We'll see what happens. Um, but that shouldn't be a sign to the WWE that everything is hunky-dory. While I like the fact that their profit was close to $10 million, it's still one of those things that there are some concerns in terms of the dividend that they pay out, what have you. So there's some good news there, but there's not 
you know, a bunch of reasons to be overly optimistic because there are still, though, like I said, those reasons for concern. So thanks again to all of you that submitted your questions for this Q&A. Uh, feel free to hit me up with your wrestling and non-wrestling questions. Add OTRS Central on Twitter as a Twitter handle. Use hashtag OTRS Central. Goodbye.